today we're going to talk about how to create a lifelong fasting lifestyle for yourself. We're going to talk about what things won't break a fast based on the why you are deciding to fast. And then we're going to talk about why it's so important to understand and tap into your own mindset about food and how it is you are taking care of your body. So welcome to today's video. My name is Diane Parham. I'm the creator of the online course and community, the Intermittent Fasting for Today's Aging Woman, as well as our Midlife Mindset Shift course and community. And here, we really do work on creating a mindset for ourselves so that we can live happy and healthy through these menopausal years that we are in and, and any battles that we have with maybe food, our body, and our attempts at losing and keeping weight off. So I asked some of of my uh, girlfriends over on Instagram uh, what it is that they were curious about in regards to what might be breaking their fast. So at the end of today's video, I will touch base on those questions. But first I wanna get into why it is we're fasting in the first place. Like what's bringing you to social media, let's say, and searching for specific things in regards to fasting? Or what videos are you finding yourself watching based on what it is that you say that you really want for yourself. So the why is always a really good place to start when we're trying to make any sort of lifestyle changes because the why you're doing something will always determine the how you're going to do that thing. So when I first started intermittent fasting, I was overweight, I had so much body fat accumulating on my body that I just couldn't get rid of. I was fatigued, I had brain fog, I was depressed, I had just been told that I was pre-diabetic. Like so many things were going on with me and my body that I wasn't happy with. And so that's why I originally or initially searched out intermittent fasting because nothing else was working for me and I had been in the health and fitness industry at this point for about 25 years I knew all the tricks of the trade none of those were working for me anymore so when I really got serious about intermittent fasting I dove right into the 20 hour squeaky clean fast as if my life depended on it because I was very serious about reversing all of those things that I was unhappy with and I was just tired of feeling bummed out about my life. And that's really what fired me up about intermittent fasting and why I went all in on the 20 hour fast, why I did it squeaky clean, and I did that for an entire year. I wanted to reverse all of the things I was unhappy with. So if you are a woman in a season of your life that you're feeling so frustrated and so unhappy and not knowing what you should do to feel happy and unfrustrated, I always say go all in. And that's the magic of the 20 hour fast and why I lead with that here in our community because it is the easiest thing for us to do. We don't have to do much of anything. We take 20 hours, we keep that fast clean, we drink our water, maybe we have a little bit of black coffee and we take advantage of the power of that 20 hour experience and what our body's capable of doing for us if we lean into that and go all in. So that is why here in this community, we do talk a lot about the 20 hour clean fast. It is the magic that will reverse all of the things that you are feeling unhappy with because you're just gonna move out of your body's way and let your body do all the work for you. Then there's the 18 hour fast and the 16 hour fast. And those two fasting protocols um, are protocols that are pretty easy to jump into, but they seem to be the two protocols that I see a lot in our comments here that a lot of women feel like they're having to do maybe. I, I don't know where, where a lot of you are coming from, but I hear a lot of women talking about they're doing 18 hours and they're doing 16 hours and they're frustrated. And so if you are frustrated and you're still seeking out answers to a lot of the things you're frustrated about, I highly recommend going into that deeper fast and keeping that clean until you're no longer unhappy and you get that feeling back like you understand your body again and you know what to do, right? And you have spent a little bit of time doing the mindset work on your emotions around food and how you're showing up around food because food will always be the thing. That feasting window is always the area that trips us up. Why are you fasting in the first place? That's going to determine how it is you show up for your fasting. So then when all those things are reversed and you're happy about your weight loss and you're happy about your physique and you're 
brain fog is gone and your energy is back and you're like, I've got this thing. I've spent some time figuring out what um, kind of foods are causing me problems, what in foods I enjoy, what foods, foods I'm going to get rid of, what foods I am going to keep in my life because they just bring me happiness and that's the way my family celebrates. Like all of that is part of this journey as well. Once you get all of that figured out, then this is where I say you have developed fasting maturity because you have experience and you've learned some things about you. When you get your fasting maturity, that's when you can really play around with your fasting and your feasting because now it's just part of who you are in this and it is a lifestyle that you can stay in. You have just learned how to flex it with some other things that might be going on in your life. So I hear in this community, women don't have any issues going on vacation, taking their fasting protocols with them. We don't have any issues with travel. We don't have any issues with social events because we know now that we have this confidence and experience of jumping in and out of fasting windows and fasting is just something that we do. If you're unhappy, go all in. Once that, once you figured out some of the things that have been going on with your body and you've come to some realizations about how it is you're showing up around food and maybe using food in improper ways, then you can jump in and out as you like. Okay, so let's go to the question that I asked on Instagram, what won't break a fast? So we often ask the question, will this break my fast? And this is where we wanna do some of that mindset shift work. If you're really serious about developing a fasting lifestyle and you want to have this lifelong fasting lifestyle and you want to reap all the benefits that fasting has to offer us this is where again i'm going to say if you're in the miserable frustrated i don't know what to do next season of your life keep your fasting clean water black coffee maybe some black tea or some tea that doesn't have any suspicious ingredients in it right so we want to go as clean as possible and we do that just to give our body the advantage to be in that healing state but when you have that fasting maturity and you are pretty comfortable and maybe now you want to venture off into some other things this is the season of life that I am currently in. I am very healthy, I'm very active, I'm very energetic, and I'm leaning really hard into the fitness area of my life now. And so some of the things that I'm doing in my fasting window and my feasting window have changed because I have changed and my body has changed. And now I, I know how to look for the signs and signals if something's not working and I can adjust pretty quickly. So if you are in a season of your life where you've got the fasting nailed and you got the food part nailed and now you want to start experimenting with some things this is where testing out some things in your fasting window might be advantageous for you so the reason i'm fasting now my why has changed is glucose control and glucose control only like i just want to make sure that i don't um, end up pre-diabetic i really want to keep my insulin um, sensitive i don't want to become I'm insulin resistant anymore and I want to keep my brain fog at bay so I really make all my decisions about my fasting window and my feasting window and even my fitness window based on what my body response is going to be insulin wise and also glucose wise when I'm making that decision so if you're in that position that's where playing around with your fasting window is going to be a really fun little experiment for you you might be able to put some things back in your coffee now I'm going to say this very very specifically because I don't want you to think if you're still frustrated and unhappy that this is like a ticket for you to put some things back in your coffee you have to make sure you are comfortable with where you are before you start experimenting with some things because if you put things back in your coffee before you're ready and before you're really understanding how your body re reacts and responds to some choices you're making then you're going to be really unhappy with the results that you get and you're going to blame it on fasting fasting doesn't ever fail us it's the choices we make in our fasting window and the choices we make in our feasting window that are always going to trip us up if you feel like you're ready to do some experimenting and putting some things back in your coffee now is a great time to do it if you're feeling like you're at that maturity state with your fasting i did this also um, with stevia in my coffee when i got to that place where everything was rocking and rolling with this lifestyle that i've created for myself and i did find that 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 putting stevia back in my coffee caused me to crave sweet 
things later on in my afternoon and I didn't want to have to battle that demon. And so I just took the stevia back out of my coffee and when I have coffee, I just have black coffee and I have just learned to really appreciate and love my black coffee and so I just keep that clean. There are a couple days in my week that I still fast for 20 hours or more squeaky clean just because it works with my lifestyle. Again, this is where ebbing and flowing in and out of your fasting with a very healthy mindset about it can really be fun and beneficial for you. Adding things like a pre-workout, adding things back in your coffee, adding flavored teas into your fasting window. Now might be a good time to experiment with that if you're feeling pretty confident of, about where you are in your decision-making process. Give it a couple weeks. See how your feasting window turns out. See how your body responds to that. See how you respond to that mentally. And if it's working for you, then no one one should tell you any different you just keep living your life you can still get some really good benefits from fasting even if you're at that point where you're slipping some things back in remember fasting for some people can just be a break from food or like the season of life that I'm in I'm doing it for glucose control I really monitor the spikes that I have in my feasting window and even the spikes that I have or don't have in my fasting window because that's the why for what I'm doing with my fasting lifestyle today it might change next year it might change in a couple years but for now that's what i'm doing and i want to encourage you to also do the same but remember to always make sure you're doing it from a healthy mindset approach so that if something doesn't work out for you you can identify the problem very quickly very clearly and then you can get the problem out of your fasting window and you can just reset and go back to living your happy and healthy life okay so this is where we come to the point of your mindset around food and the mindset that you have about taking care of yourself if you can really work on the thoughts that you have in your brain about how it is you show up around food I like to describe this as how you show up for you when food is present and then really working on the thoughts you have in your brain when you are making choices about taking care of yourself. We can have some flexibility and we can have some fun in our life. Not everything has to be so regimented and so rigid around rules. It's just food and we want to live our life and you can live a fasting lifestyle forever if that's what you choose to do. There's no reason why you should feel like you have to eat all day or you have to eat around your cycle or you have to eat according to what the moon is doing. Like all of that is just someone else's idea of how it is they want to live their life and what they choose to share on the internet. But ultimately, you are the only one who should make the final decision about how it is you're choosing to show up for yourself and what it is you want to be able to benefit from with fasting. And if you are at a place where you're like, I am rocking this, I am getting all the results that I was hoping for, no one should question how you're getting those results. No one should question why it is you're so happy. You figured you out you figured your body out and you figured out what works best for you. Whether that's 20 hours, 18 hours, 16 hours, 12 hours, whether you're putting things in your fasting window or doing it squeaky clean or doing a 36 hour fast, whatever it is you're doing, the bottom line is we just wanna be happy and healthy. And if fasting is something that lights your fire, like it lights by fire, then you should be able to do it for the rest of your life. And creating a lifestyle that works for you around the rules and parameters you're setting for yourself so that you can be happy and healthy is the key to living this lifestyle forever. And everyone should have that opportunity. Take advice, watch videos, read the books, do all the things, but do it from the mindset of, gee whiz, that's interesting. How can this benefit my life or is this just something that doesn't make sense for me and I'm just going to put it on the shelf and maybe I'll revisit it at another time. But you don't have to do what everybody else is doing. You have to do what works for you. And this is why I coach from the mindset approach and not the nutrition approach. The goal is to get you to a point where you're not complaining about you where you have the opportunity to wake up in the morning looking and feeling your best and doing that in your most authentic way. 
when you hit that stride, rinse and repeat. Do all the things that got you to that point over and over and over again until you're ready to make a change. Your why is going to change for why it is your fasting. The best way to get results with anything is to stick it out until you get the result. There's enough proof for you to know that this works. Read the comment section of any video that I've posted on my YouTube channel. You will find amazing stories from women who are choosing this as their forever lifestyle. But you gotta give yourself that opportunity to get that result, to have that opportunity to wake up every day looking and feeling your best and doing that in a way that makes sense for you and the life you choose to live. I encourage you to spend some time thinking about why it is you are interested in starting an intermittent fasting lifestyle. Not a quick fix approach, not something you're gonna do for a couple of weeks and just see how it goes. Why are you interested in incorporating this lifestyle around food and taking care of yourself? That's going to determine how you execute fasting for you. Pick a protocol. Does that protocol make sense based on your why? Do you need to go clean with your fasting so that you can give yourself the most advantageous opportunity to get that result that you're hoping for? Once you gain that fasting maturity, then you can start playing around with some things in your fasting window, putting that creamer back in your coffee, maybe some stevia back in your coffee. If you're like me and you're working out and fitness is now a big priority for you, maybe experimenting with some pre-workouts or maybe even some electrolytes. See how it goes. If it doesn't work out for you, you can always just take it back out and go back to the fasting protocol that was working for you before. And then work on your mindset around food. Are you eating when you're bored? Are you eating when you're stressed? Are you eating because you don't understand what hunger cues mean for you? Are you eating because you don't understand the power of sitting in a state of hungry and feeling that sense of empowerment and that feeling of magic when hungry is doing a big favor for you, that's a big thing for a lot of women. You'll wanna work on that one as well. And then how is it that you're taking care of yourself? Are you making informed decisions for you, your body, and the life that you wanna live? Because happy and healthy is very important and we wanna make sure that we have the opportunity to have both. Okay, let's see what questions we got uh, from our Instagram friends and, um, and then we'll close out today's video. So I think I've pretty much generally answered these, but I'm gonna read these out just to make sure you might have this question as well. Do electrolytes sugar-free break a fast? So again, that's gonna be dependent on why it is your fasting and are the electrolytes that you're putting in your fasting window, are the benefits that they're providing you more than the risk of you breaking your fast? And so you're gonna be the only one that can answer that one. The other one was bulletproof coffee, when to take it if using. Okay, so if you want, if you're at that place where you're happy and healthy and you're fasting and you wanna continue fasting but you really wanna be able to put some things back in your coffee, this is a great time to exper experiment with something like bulletproof coffee. Put it back in your coffee, figure out if you wanna do that every day, maybe it's just on special occasions. See how that works for you now that your body's in a healed state. And if you're not seeing any negatives to putting bulletproof back, bulletproof coffee back in your fasting window, then I say enjoy your bulletproof coffee and don't let anybody tell you otherwise. If you start to notice that you're craving sugar or you're not fasting as much anymore um, because you're feeling like you're getting um, hungry and so now you're like mentally just choosing to not fast as long, or maybe your body's not responding to the bulletproof coffee the way you hoped it, take it out. Reset yourself, go back to the way you were fasting before. Maybe it's something you just put in on occasion or maybe it's something that's just not gonna ever work for you. Uh, so I got two for bulletproof coffee, so hopefully that one answered that one. Stevia, I talked a little bit about my own personal experience. Again, it's that thing that you're gonna have to just experiment with you if you're putting Stevia back in your fasting window. Um, will it break your fast? we won't know, right? You'll have to play with that a little bit and see, does it cause you to have sugar cravings? Are you noticing some body fat coming back? Are you losing the energized sense of calm? If you're losing the benefits that you are getting from fasting because you put stevia back in your fasting window, again, you have to decide, is the stevia back in my fasting window a higher priority and a higher benefit than the, thing, the, the things that I was getting before I put it back in? And you're gonna be the only one that can make that decision for yourself. 
green or black tea or herbal teas will they break fast I don't know try them out the one thing I do say about teas and herbal teas is make sure you're reading the ingredients labels very carefully a lot of these teas the the marketing on the front is what sells us and we think we're getting some super clean detox tea or something like that and then you turn around the ingredients label on the back and it's full of just a bunk, bunch of junk do you want to put that in a window of your day that is really designated for healing for you and um, again you're going to be the only one that can decide that put them in play with it a little bit see how you're feeling um, a lot of women have reported back when they start experimenting and putting things back in their fasting window because they've determined it didn't break a fast for them they lose what we experience here with a clean fast that energized sense of calm and so if you really like that energized sense of calm and the energized sense of calm is the primary reason why i fast squeaky clean for 20 plus hours a couple times a week. I like that feeling of that internal energy and that mental clarity and that stability in my emotions. I love that feeling. And so that's why I keep things squeaky clean a couple days a week. If you also like that feeling, either designate a couple days as squeaky clean or if you notice that the herbal teas are affecting that and you're losing that altogether and you can't remember the last time you felt that, take the teas out because I don't think that that's really worth it. Maybe put it in a different time in your fasting window. Um, mint, herb, fennel seeds, cardamom. Um, again, you have to play with those. Like, why are you putting those in your fasting window? Are they, are they in a tea? Are they in something you're eating? Um, and then are you fasting? You know, that's the other thing we have to ask ourselves is, are we really fasting or are we telling our brain that, we, that we're fasting because we're just putting food in our body in a different way? So there's a big difference between fasting and just not eating. And fasting is a hormonal state that we're trying to develop within our body system. And not eating is doing things that our brain believes is not like sitting down to eat a meal but it's also not fasting and so we have to make the distinction between the two of those also and for a lot of women especially we think that if we're not sitting down to a placemat and a plate and a knife and a fork and everything super formal then you know if we're not having that experience that we're then we're not you know we're, we're fasting but that's not always the case we have the little bite of this or the little thing of this as we're walking through the kitchen or we're putting these things back in our coffee or we're having you know all these you know herbs and things in in some concoction in our fasting window and that might not be fasting it's just not eating. And so make sure you're very clear clear on that and you're very honest with yourself. Are you fasting or are you just not eating? And that might be a big aha moment for you also. And then the last one is does MCT oil break a fast if you put it in black tea? So MCT oil, again, is another one of those things we get marketed to. So make sure wherever you're getting your MCT oil that it it, you're reading the ingredients label and that it's clean as far as ingredients. I mean, there's no funky things in there that you don't recognize. So a pure MCT oil is just fat or it should just be fat. So as long as you're putting fat in your fasting window, you should be fine. You're taking yourself out of that squeaky clean, but that might be okay for you because maybe you're healed. Maybe your insulin um, is responding the way it's supposed to be responding. Maybe you've reversed a lot of things and you might be at a place where putting some fat in your fasting window might be beneficial for you. It might help you produce some ketones. It might give you a nice energy burst. It might be something that's gonna keep you satiated. So play around with it. The only thing that I recommend is that you make sure you're reading the ingredients label and you know where it's sourced from. So you're not gonna be disappointed by putting something funky in your body that you didn't intend to do in, in a window of your day that you really want to be able to take advantage of some healing benefits as well. So pure fats are, us are usually not a problem. You just want to make sure they're not going to trigger something else for you. So thank you for everyone who put uh, some questions in the uh, Instagram box for me. I hope this is helpful for you in regards to what won't break a fast, right? And what can I put in my fasting window and still be able to reap some of these benefits of practicing an intermittent fasting lifestyle? Because the goal for us here in this community is to practice some sort of fasting 
for the rest of our lives so that we can really flex on those benefits that fasting can provide for us. So why are you fasting? What won't break a fast based on that why and where you are on your own personal journey and then managing our mindset around food and how it is we are choosing to take care of ourselves. Thanks for checking in uh, for today's video. I'm going to link some other videos down for you in the description box below that will explain some of the things that we have talked about today and maybe just a different way. Sometimes it takes hearing it more than one time or in a different way for it to click for you. At least I know that that is what works for me. So always make sure you check the description box. In the description box, I also include lots of things that I use in my own fasting lifestyle, as well as information about how it is you can jump into our next intermittent fasting for today's Aging Woman course. Let me know you stopped by today. Leave me a comment in this comment section. If you haven't done so yet, please make sure that you have subscribed. It's super easy for you to do, and it does a whole lot of help for me and our channel to make sure that we get put in the hands, the eyes, and the ears of women who need to hear our message. It was great to spend some time with you today. I'll see you in the next video.